Welcome everyone to this latest edition of the Virtual Bridge Sessions and I'm delighted to be joined by my colleague Sandy. Hi Sandy. <laughs> Today <Good morning>. uh, <laughs> um, where, where you're going to be talking about putting um, staff well-being first. I've said that wrong isn't it? Is, is it putting well-being for staff first? It, it was really... Putting staff well-being first Kenji. <laughs> Either will do. We get the gist. <laughs> Excellent stuff. So I'm just going to sit back and let it wash all over me. So without further ado, over to you, Sandy. Thank you, Kenji. Kenji always cheers me up, so he's good <laughs> for my well-being at the start of the day. Yes, good morning, everybody. I'm really delighted to um, be here today and to be focusing on my favourite subject, which is well-being. And my very favourite subject is staff well-being. And I think, um, you know, it is, it is a short session, but I hope hopefully um, the fact that you've um, come in and joined the session today um, you'll, you'll get something of value out of it. Um, the, the networks I work most closely with are um, those for those staff involved in access and inclusion, guidance, student support, and um, and safeguarding. And since um, since lockdown, we've been meeting um, probably every fortnight um, since since March. And a huge focus across these net, networks has really been on um, on student well-being and really how quickly you move services online and the creative ways you reached out and engaged with students. But there's been very little around um, staff wellbeing. And I think most of my recent delivery and most of the recent requests I have have been really around um, staff wellbeing. And um, these, this is really what I want to focus on now. So it, it goes without saying that the last six months have um, put enormous pressure on us all as we've adapted in um, huge ways in the way we live our lives and, and our working lives in the backdrop of the coronavirus pandemic. And I tend to think of it as a bit of a corona coaster of emotions for all of us. And um, I think we started off with this um, real sprint as we were galvanized into action in this sort of emergency situation, um, really amazingly quickly um, adapted to this sort of crisis situation. But it's not going away now and we're sort of six months into this and, and it's actually now looking at this in terms of it's a bit of a more it's more of a marathon than a sprint and what can we do to sustain our well-being um, at, at this time and, and what can we do what little steps can we can we um, implement on a daily basis that can really actually keep us going and sustain it sustain us at this time um, so the plan of action is, um, I've got to, um, really, I've been delivering sessions that are around an hour and an hour and a half long on this theme um, virtually. So this is a real condensed one. So I'm going to introduce a couple of the concepts and have a little bit of discussion um, with the caveat that after this, if you're interested in more, you can maybe get back and, 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 and make contact. Um, so I will just... While I'm um, sharing my screen, I wonder if you could just um, in the chat, if, in, I'd like to invite you in the chat to put maybe one thing that you do already for your well-being, just in, into the chat and I will share the screen and then we'll just um, have a little look at that. Okay, so... Um, Kenji, would you like to just ping in a few of the, I, I'm trying to monotask as opposed to multitask, just a little gist of what's coming up in the... the there, there, there are quite a few things. Um, and okay, I should just preface, a wee handful. I should preface this by saying that in, in at CDN, I should say that Sandy is like the most happy and cheerful person that I have ever met. <laughs> oh, fake it to make it, Kenji. <laughs> you do that so well, though. Right. Uh, quite a few people have added things like walking, uh, playing the PlayStation. Oh, I support that. Um, meeting up with family and friends, uh, taking a walk every day, uh, walking the dog, virtual choir, Ooh. Um, daily exercise. Um, I've, I've written um, binging on Netflix, but you know, okay, that's probably yeah. just me. Uh, hobbies um, okay, and general great. exercise. Okay. Great. Well, we'll just um, we'll, we'll park that for now, but then then come come back to that. Um, I can relate to a few of those too. Um, so just during this session, we're going to explore and reflect on approaches that 
could ultra enhance your mental health and well-being or, or models that you could look at that might help and identify ways that we can be pre proactive and take more control of our well-being, especially in this time of uncertainty where we feel we could be totally out of control or not have any control over everything. So, um, so I think that would be good and really encourage you to reflect on this. Um, the fact that you've turned up today really is, is great because it shows that um, you really do want to focus on well-being. So just moving on, um, I'm just going to look at the concept of um, dental health versus mental health. Um, and it, if you really consider the way the industry supports dental health and how proactive we are, or I can't make assumptions, but generally are very proactive about our dental health care, um, consider how we practice good dental hy hygiene, how proactive we are around our dental health. Um, it's something that's drilled into us, excuse the pun, um, from a young age, generally. Um, and we're very proactive, but if you think of that in relation to mental health, there's one letter difference, but a huge, um, a world apart in terms of our input and understanding and how proactive we are. And we, we don't often pay attention to our mental health until we do hit this, um, hit this, hit this wall. So how often do we apply um, sort of healthy behaviors to our, our mental health? So it's really about thinking about establishing or re-establishing or doing more of the things, um, the rituals um, that will actually keep us well. And of course, they're all individual and different things work for, for, for each of us. Um, and, it, and it's a way of um, yeah, just making a few of these little tweaks, being proactive at, at, this, at this time of stress. But I think it is a good analogy. It's this bit around, you know, there isn't really parity to between mental and physical health. And um, as I said, we don't pay attention to our mental health until it's sort of screaming at us. And this is a quote um, you'll probably be familiar with, which I love about um, mental health is not a destination, but a process. It's about how you drive and not where you're going. And I think it's about, um, it's this bit about finding daily balance. It's not about reaching some, some kind of nirvana, which would be absolutely lovely, um, but it's about every day finding balance and, and adjusting and, um, and um, yeah, just looking at things that could, could support us. And, and I think at the moment, a lot of us need um, all the support we, we can get. Um, so what I'm going to do now, I'm going to show you... Um, a model. Um, it's it's a, a model by British psychologist um, Paul Gilbert, or devised by Paul Gilbert. And I'm going to talk through this um, the model, and maybe then ask you to reflect on where you see yourselves in relation to this. So Paul Gilbert, he's a British psychologist. He's an evolutionary psychologist. And he proposes that human beings switch between three systems in order to manage their emotions. Um, and I think what's interesting, each system is associated with different brain regions and different brain chemistry. So it's that biological, psychological um, relationship. And he talks about distress is caused by imbalance between the systems, um, often associated with underdevelopment or not doing enough in the soothing system. Um, now, of course, no model can really, um, I, I suppose, replicate the complexities of the human, um, of, of the human being. But I, but I think this is just an interesting starter for 10. So I'm going to talk through these different components. Um, the slide that follows this has more of the detail, which you'll, you'll get in, in, in the presentation. Um, and then I'd like um, maybe you to have a little reflection um, in relation to this. So we've got the drive system, the threat system, and the soothing system. So the drive system, the purpose of that is really to motivate us towards resources, to get up in the morning, get going, um, get out there. And um, the, the hormone related to that would be really dopamine. And it's about pursuing and achieving our goals and progressing. So that all sounds great. We've got um, the threat system then, um, really the threat detection and protection. That's the purpose of that and keeping us safe. And the area of the brain that um, 
where that all happens is, is really the amygdala or in, within the, the limbic system. And you've got the hormones of adrenaline and cortisol that you can all probably relate to. Um, and the feelings around that are the um, anger, anxiety, and fear. And our threat system is then um, is, is often galvanized. And I think probably at the moment for many of us more often than not. Um, and then you've got the soothing system and that system is really to manage distress and promote um, bonding. And the brain region is the prefrontal frontal cortex. Now I'm not a neuroscientist, but it's a bit behind the forehead. Um, the newest part of the brain, if you're looking at evolutionary in terms of evolutionary development. Um, and the hormones around there uh, activated there are, are sort of opiates and oxytocin, or we talk about the, cut, the cuddle drug, which I quite like that term. Um, so I think if we look also at the threat system, if you're looking at the terms of, um, we, we talk about us from an evolutionary point of view, having sort of three brains and the threat system is, is our reptilian brain, our prehistoric brain, and we've got no, often no control over that. And that just kicks off. We talk about um, a limbic system hijack and we've got no control over that. Um, and the bit we do have control at, at is really the soothing system and beefing up our soothing system. And that's where um, things like mindfulness and other well-being practices can really actually um, calm down the threat system. And physically, I think now we know in relation to the neuroscience and the neuroplasticity actually change the brain structure. So I think we're in a period in time where psychology feels really hopeful. We're not, pre, it's not predetermined. Um, and um, so really it's the soothing system we're going to be looking at today in relation to some of the well-being practices. So just looking at this model, and I'm going to come out of um, the PowerPoint for a minute and get you, I mean, I, to maybe reflect on where you are in, in relation to this. I mean, you don't have to tell me, but if anyone's up for a little chat around this, where you're finding yourself on this um, on, on this diagram. I, I know that um, I've been ducking and diving between um, initially drive, threat, drive, threat, and it's really been um, having to work very proactively to work on, on the soothing system at this period. So I'm gonna stop sharing now and um, just maybe open this up for just five minutes. That's okay. And so I'll, I'll go first, if I may. Uh, own Thanks, Owen. I know. Yep. So I, I've just recently, recently, in the past six months, I get into Joe Wick, something I've never done before. Would that be fight or flight for the, for the threat? Would that be um, soothing? Would that be drive? What, what does that come under? Uh, well, I, I suppose from, from an activity point of view, um, it would activate the feel-good hormones, which will actually help your soothing system, but it will be to counteract your... Um, you know, the, the cortisol or the adrenaline and to bring you back into balance. So in a sense, that would, um, you're being proactive and physical exercise has a lot of, um, you know, known benefits for, for mental health, which will take you then into the soothing system. Because I know if I've done some exercise, exercise is one of my things. And after exercise, I'm then settled and I can see myself veering towards soothing. So that is definitely one of my strategies. So it, it looks like three separate systems. They're all a bit interchangeable, but that, that would definitely push you into that, Owen. Um, yeah. Any other, anyone else want to sh share their observations in, in relation to this? I, I don't want to put you on the spot, but... My wife continuously tells me that um, I probably should spend more time in the, the drive part of my big brain. <laughs> And I'm spending far too much time in the soothing part of my brain. Is, yeah, is, well, is, there, is there anything I could do um, to, to enhance, I suppose, that kind of motivational drive aspect? Um, good question. Yes, because actually imbalance in the soothe side can often lead to lack of motivation and boredom. But I don't see that in you, Kenji. So I'm... Um, <laughs> um, um, but no, no, I think it, it really is about the balance and we need all three of these systems that they're all context, they're all context specific. Um, so I think, um, you know, the, the times where we're needing to galvanize ourselves to action. So I think at the beginning of this pandemic, I think most of us generally, 
even if we were used to working at home, we're, um, we were working at home in a crisis. So I think uh, we were ducking and diving between drive and fight and flight and back. And, and too much drive can push you into exhaustion, into the, the, the fight or flight. Well, I see Alison's hands up. Alison? It, hi. Um, I was going to say Alison. that, hi, can you hear me? Yes, I can, yeah. Thanks, Sandy. I've sort of really taken a step back of being connected and online all the time. And, you know, recognising that what's the point in being everything to my colleagues and students, but being a worn out stranger to my family and just taking the time out. And it's okay being kind to myself, just saying it's all right to have that walk, to have that 10 minutes, to have that, you know, it's just because your computer's at home, you feel like you've got to be back at a quick lunch and back at the desk again. Yeah. Yeah. And it's making sure that, you know, um, life, you know, work doesn't become my life and life doesn't become my work, you know, just sort of getting that balance. So I've really yeah. been focusing in on that and taking, you know, if you had your uh, your lunch half hour, you would take your full half hour. But because your computer's there, you go back to it. So you find yourself yeah. gravitating yeah. back and being constantly available for everything, you know, know, from maybe eight in the morning till six at night. It's not a good. It's uh, yeah. So I've, I've kind of taken a step yeah. back and taken more regular breaks. Yeah. So that's my. And I think we've learned this way as things have gone on, haven't we? Because in a sense, we're sitting down at the moment you can't escape unless you're building in these breaks between meetings um you know and sessions and, and that balance it, i think it's really caught up and i've been picking that up with sessions i've been running around the well-being of just generally feeling burnt out and exhausted and we were hardly into the session so um i think that's um, that that's Great. I'm going to, if you don't mind, I'm going to move on because I realise we're now at 17 minutes past 11 already. And I'm going to go and look at one of the, um, just one of the models and we'll come back to, we'll come back to this. So I'm going to share my screen again. Oops, sorry. I see a lot of people are commenting about the fact that the, the work and the fact that the, all that they're, you're always in amongst technology which really connects yeah. you to the world and and you're you have a feeling of always being on um, yeah yeah no absolutely and it's looking at that, how we can work with that because it's not going away to actually manage that and rebalance um in in relation to this um what i'm going to do now is i'm going to just look at um the, the second slide gives you a bit more detail about the drive systems that i kind of talked through and the relationship between um, biology and psychology and hormones um, but I wanted to just um, look at this, this model. I, I do some consultancy work for the Wellbeing Project UK, mainly delivering mental health first aid to their um, services, their Scottish clients. But one of the sessions delivered within their portfolio is around the five foundation stones of wellbeing, um, which probably helps us categorize us and helps us to understand what we can do on a daily basis to proactively look after our well-being. So I'm going to just have um, just go through these steps and then again have a little chat around if, if you could see any obvious gaps for you um, and again not putting you on the spot but maybe get you to think about this. So obviously we've got the self-care one, um, that body-mind connect, um, obviously the bit about being well hydrated, eating well, moving our body, um, Getting, trying to get quality rest, you know, the body, body mind connect, the recovery time you've talked about, about getting away from your computer, creating the right conditions for our body and mind to feel centered and, and work well. So uh, is there anything in there that has gone by the board over this period that we could beef up? Is there anything, um, is, is there any small thing within the self care that might actually make all the difference? We're not talking about big, big steps. Um, we've got the area of focus being centered and having meaning. Um, the future focus sort of helps us to navigate our day-to-day -day life, I suppose, with the knowledge that we're kind of on the right path. It's tricky at the moment with the things the way, the way they are, um, but taking time to map out what's important to us and why and how to build this into our life provides a sort of sense of purpose. Um, helping us to both enjoy the present and look forward to the, to the future. The challenge for us now is we're living in such uncertain times, it's almost like taking a day at a time. That's one of my wellbeing strategies. Um, 
there's a big bit here around connection and what we need as um, as humans. We're all social beings who benefit from the sense of belonging that comes from social connection, and that's been really kind of taken a hammering over this period because we're having to connect in very real ways, very different ways, which are continually virtual, whether it's been our family connections, our friends, our students, our staff, and it's very one, one dimensional in a way and, um, and can be exhausting. So we're learning to connect in different ways, and, um, but we really need connection. Um, so that, that's a biggie. So in feeling connected, we can experience comfort, comfort and safety that we're not alone. And that's the bit that activates the soothing system and the, as I said, the um, feel good hormones, the oxytocin, um, et cetera. And then there's a bit around um, adapt, adaptability. Um, change can bring uncertainty. And that seems really obvious and a bit trite now. <laughs> we're, in so, we're in real uncertain and uncharted waters. Um, yet it can also bring growth and learning. And again, speaking to colleagues across the sector, um, there's been huge learning in, in, the, in this period too. Um, we've all had to be open to new ideas and explore different ways of doing things that can help us um, sort of get through. And we're in the big, one of the biggest um, changes currently, and we're still in the middle of it. So how do we adapt and open our minds to choice and possibility? And um, in a way, you need to be in a, a relative state of calm to be able to do this. So it's about the, um, how can we beef up our soothing system? And that, that final foundation is really about appreciation. Um, I suppose this is probably another way of looking at um, gratitude, being aware of what we're good at and valuing ourselves and others um, can provide a useful anchor for our self-esteem. Um, so it's about actually thinking about things we've got to be grateful for and small things we've got to be grateful for when everything else is out of, um, out of control. So these are broad foundation stones. Again, we haven't got time to go into them in, in much depth. But if you're looking at these chunks, these foundations, is there something, is, is there one or more of these that you can see where there's um, an area that you, you could potentially focus on, an element within these foundations um, in, in relation to enhancing your well-being? Um, Sheila has put an interesting point about appreciation into the chat. Sheila, you mm -hmm. might want to unmute and just... Uh, yeah. I'll, come, I'll come out of, um, I'll just come out of this um, again. Just, go, just bear in mind these steps and I'll stop share. Okay. Hi, everyone. Hi, she Hi Sheila. Hi, Sandy. Thanks for that. No, I was just kidding. And thanks for putting me on the spot there, Kenji. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think just putting in there that it's okay to be not okay. I think I've had, um, I mean, I work for myself. So um, in some ways it's, well, I, I kind of fluctuate, like everyone, I fluctuate between all the, the things that you were saying. Some days I feel oh, fine and I'm quite motivated. And other days I just want to hide in the cupboard and not come out again. Yeah. Um, and that's, you know, and so I think it's just admitting that you're okay. And actually, I think sometimes when we're at work and we're connecting and we're being everything and doing everything for our students, we're all, yes, we've got to be, we've all I know, got to be. I know. But I think it's, again, that, you know, there's a comment there from Alison about, about kindness and care. I think... Yeah. I think it's remembering that and sometimes I find like our other speaker you know kind of withdrawing a bit from some networks because I just yeah. need some time and space and I actually need to be not okay for a bit and then yeah. I'll be okay. yeah but I just need to have that space to do that. Yeah. Actually Sheila that's a, a really good point I read a really good um, um, Twitter feed from a, a Dr Aisha Ahmad I don't know if any of you have heard of her she's worked as a war correspondent in um, in real crisis situations. And, and she was actually looking at um, this six, six month wall that people hit, regardless of um, you know, what, what the crisis is about. Actually, um, you hit this kind of six month wall and then you have to adjust and be okay with not being okay, Sheila, as you said, regroup, um, re-energize, um, and then move forward again into in, into the next phase. So I, I thought her um, her her Twitter was Twitter feed was actually a brilliant article because I, I think I was definitely hitting that six month um, 
yeah. I think that's. I think there's a bit of a, an, well, we all want things to go back to normal, and I think we're kind of obsessed with nor whatever normal is, and actually this isn't normal. It's not going to be back to what no, no. we consider normal for quite some time. No. So I think accepting that is is part of that as well. Yeah. But quite stress inducing, and inside. but I think we've got to be honest about that, particularly. Yeah, absolutely. With our colleagues and with our students, that you know this is different. But you know if we're all kind of are honest about that then we'll all get yeah. to it yeah. yeah that's a really good point and we need in a way time off at this moment for a little bit of recovery time and not power through and just settle again and regroup and and um and re-energize um any any other comments before allison and debbie have their hands raised and um, and I, I have to say I, i'm i'm being slightly um, tempted to ask debbie first but that's only because she's holding a dog Okay, Debbie, go for it. With your, our pet therapy is always yeah, good. Yeah, pet, pet therapy bless her. She's won this week, so it's going to be birthday uh, in a couple of days. But this is this is her place when I'm working, which is lovely. Until you try to do something on the keyboard, and then she doesn't help very much. But never mind. And um, so a couple of things that 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 I tried to do right at the very beginning of lockdown was was um around my team um and the fact that. I try to replicate what we did normally in work. So every morning you go in and you have a chat about what you did the night before or how everybody's feeling. And I think we really, we, we kind of rushed into being on Teams and being on Zoom is about business and what we need to do for work. Yeah. And we just needed to pull that back a wee bit to actually, let's just make this normal. So, do you know, how are the kids and what yeah. are you doing? And do you have your tea? The normal club yeah. chat that you usually have, which which is all about all of those things that are on the, on that table. And yes. I think also, um, I've done a lot of work with, with my team as well around mindset. And actually, we need to look at the positives. You know, we can sit in our shorts if we want to sit in our shorts. We don't have to get dressed every morning. Um, yeah, yeah. And the business gear, the commute is fantastic at the minute. Yeah, so, yes. you know, coffee's on tap. You don't have to walk to the kitchen anywhere to make it. It's kind of, everything's there. So we've done a lot of work around that. And we meet every single morning just for 10 yeah. minutes. Yeah. every single morning at 8.45 and they feel that that kind of that, that pulls up their drive you know because yeah that's, that's the start of our day we've had our little bit chat then we go into the you know what does everybody yeah. do today um and, and that's good yeah and i mean that that fits really with that whole element um of the connection foundation doesn't it yeah. around yeah. um yeah. and the you appreciation know, because yeah. if, you know if you can do that you know, I get a lot of support from them as their manager, but they also get support from me and they know that, that we're all there to support each other. And they've certainly um, benefited greatly from that over, yeah. over the last while and, and will continue to do so over the next six great, months, probably. Great, great. <laughs> um, anything else? I, I'm missing some of the chat. Um, it's me. To, um, but, uh, anything, anything else anyone wants to contribute just before I, I finish off this part with just another... Lynn um, made an interesting point about what she does each morning. I don't know, if, Lynn, if you want to say that yourself. And just in the interest of time, I'm just going to read out. She said, um, I email my team every morning just to say what I'm doing and find out how they're getting on, which yeah. is, is a nice yeah. touch. Yeah, and just a t t touching base. Um, I must say one benefit for me is I have seen more of Kenji than I usually do virt um, in our virtual world because we were running around the countryside in different directions before. Um, I'm just going to finish one little, um, one other, um, I'm going to share the screen in just one other sort of um, concept, um, just a, a small, um, just to think about that might be useful. Again, it's about these um, simple steps and one of the one of the things I've been sort of working on um, you know you've got enough on your to-do list the things you're all juggling um, in relation to well obviously there's a work side you've all got very individual home situations home context um, but I quite like the concept of the mind apple and it's a simple day-to-day -day activity that's kind of good for the mind this is this bit around um, being proactive in relation to mental health versus dental health so um, so it's, it doesn't have to be your five a day for the mind, but it might be if you're finding that you're, you know, quite burnt out, exhausted, frazzled and hovering around that threat system and between threat and, and, and drive, 
um, is thinking about where can you put some little tweaks in in relation to looking after your well-being. What mine apples can you um, employ, uh, employ at this sort of time? So I have, um, I mean, examples for me of my mind apples are definitely, um, well, like Alison said, it's, a, it's limiting being clear about breaks between meetings and my online time and I'm managing that better than I did at the beginning. Another one for me is man definitely managing my news intake um, and, and being really careful about that and, and the impact. New I was being mindful of the impact the news was having on me and managing that. Exercise is one of my other ones. Um, reading, well, Netflix like Kenji is another of my ones, escapism and reading some good um, fiction. So these are examples of little mind apples. So maybe moving forward before I just come out of this is maybe think about um, what mind apples, and we all have our different batch of mind apples or, um, because we're all very individual, but what, what other things can you tweak and adjust that will actually keep you going and well at, um, at this time? So I'm gonna come out of um, stop sharing. That's all we've kind of, this has been a whistle stop tour of a focus on staff wellbeing some, um, and, um, and we've kind of run out of the, the time for the session, but we're still up for discussion, but let's have a wee chat around um, maybe finishing off. You started talking about your wellbeing, any mind apples that um, you want to add to your list or things that, um, you feel you would like to start doing even little tweaks and adjustments that might help as you move into this um, next session. Um, that's you. probably all we really have time for for this recorded portion of, of the session today. We will continue the chat uh, afterwards. I see a couple of people have posted some interesting suggestions. Some people have posted privately to me as well. Um, one interesting tip that has been mentioned in previous virtual uh, bridge sessions is the idea of with, with students and people contacting you, not necessarily to contact and reply immediately um, to anything that you're asked. Maybe, maybe give it a couple of hours um, yeah. just to remove the expectation that people are going to be yeah. replied to <laughs> instantly because yeah. we're yeah. always online yeah. um, and, yeah. and just taking a bit of space, which seems like a good suggestion. Yeah. But Sandy, we'll continue um, the conversation yeah, with sure, you. But yeah. for those of you who have joined us via YouTube and watching a recording of this session, thanks for watching and getting to this point <laughs> for one thing. But hopefully we'll see you present, um, perhaps in person at a future yeah. virtual bridge yeah. session. So until and then. get in touch. Get in touch <laughs> if you want anything, any more information or to run any other longer sessions with your teams. I'd be happy Absolutely. to do that. Okay, excellent. And until then, stay safe.